This interview is for information only and should not be considered as investment advice or a recommendation to buy shares in the company featured. Welcome to this stock box interview. Today is Oliver Friesen, the CEO of Golden Metal Resources, following news from the Garfield project where the company have identified large magnetic anomalies connected with the power lines zone where previous sampling confirmed the presence of significant porphyry and epithermal mineralization. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. Oliver, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing well, Mark. How are you? Very good. Thank you, Oliver. So you've done this magnetic survey over the whole area at Garfield here, and this was really to help you, I guess, hone in on areas of interest. Yeah. So so what we've done with Garfield since we sort of took the asset on is we've slowly been moving it towards that drill ready stage. The big kind of previous step was the confirmation that we have high grade copper, silver and gold across very large parts of the Gar Garfield property specifically located uh, and concentrated within the, the power line zone and the high grid zone. So the next question is, okay, is there anything potentially at depth here, which is causing all this mineralization at surface? That, that's the real question here. Cause a lot of times you go through lots of parts of Nevada, you'll find little sort of high grade structures or things like that, that can contain high grade minerals, but they're not of economic importance. However, when you're looking for porphyry systems, if there's something at depth here that's driving all this, this fluid flow mm -hmm. at the surface, that could be significant. So that was the big question that I had uh, and the, we needed to get answered here. So with doing the, the geophysics and the ground geophysics, um, the magnetic anomalies we've now identified are pointing to something at depth here, which is obviously really exciting. So the magnetics indicate that there's something there and now you get on the ground and do more concentrated surveys. So, so what the survey has told us is that there are some magnetic anomalies at depth. That's all it's told us, but that's a really important development because when you're looking for these porphyry systems, these intrusions are magnetic relative to the surrounding rock. Now, obviously, we can't confirm that those anomalies are porphyry systems uh, until we go and actually test them and drill them. But what it's pointing us to is the fact that there's three anomalies found and all of them are located effectively, almost perfectly aligned or proximal to the main copper in soil anomalies, as well as the main copper in rock anomalies. So when you have these kind of big anomalies, and then right on top of that, you're seeing your high grade copper, gold and silver at surface. That's why we're so encouraged is because of the coincidence between where the anomalies are found and where we know our copper at surface is located. Okay. And you mentioned in the RNS there about the stacked profile that, that indicates the copper porphyry. Can you explain a bit more about that? Yeah, no, it's a bit of a, it's, a, it's an important nuance, but what I've done is I've actually recorded a technical video that I'll put out, which sort of explains that. But what we're looking at, and, and, and you know, anyone who had a look at the map will see that there's other magnetic highs across the property, but they look different than the ones that we've circled. And the reason mm -hmm. is the stack profiles tells you what the actual survey um, collection device is doing as someone is walking over that magnetic anomaly. A lot of times, especially in Nevada, you have what's called post mineral volcanics like basalts. Basalts are very magnetic. So as the, the surveyor walks over, the, 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 you know, the reading will be spiking and showing a high magnetic anomaly. But those aren't of interest because those are just at surface. They're kind of wispy. They're, they're you know, in, inconsistent. What we're looking for is these buried anomalies at depth. Um, so the stack profile is telling us what that actual survey reading is doing over the various objects. And then what we can do is compare the profiles across the project to remove certain anomalies that we know we're not interested in. And that has left us with the three anomalies that we've outlined in, in the RNS. We've circled them or we've highlighted them in a white dash line. So the stack profile is telling us that, hey, these three anomalies, they're different than the other ones that, that are found in the survey. And just on top of that, those three anomalies located almost perfectly within the high grade zone and in particular in the sorry, in the power line zone and in particular in the high grade zone, which is exactly what we wanted to find here, which is very exciting. OK, OK. It is interesting, as you mentioned there, that um, it, it overlies almost perfectly with the soil samples. So, again, that, that that's boosting confidence here that there's, there is something going on there. But you say you actually won't know until you drill it is that is that the case you actually will not know until there's nothing more you can do until you, you get a drill going down there 
Yeah, I mean, ultimately, I mean, you know, like you said, the, to, to, to have those anomalies where they are boost confidence, mainly because, you know, when we're when we set out to do this survey, we didn't know what we're going to find. We know there's high grade copper cr across large areas at Garfield. But the next big question is, and ultimately, if, if the answer was no, then this project is probably something that wouldn't be much less interesting than what it is now. Um, but to find those buried magnetic targets right below those copper and soil and copper and rock anomalies very much increases our confidence. And as a geologist, if you had given me a pen before we undertook this survey and said, where would you like to see anomalies in the high grade zone? I would have drawn them pretty much exactly where <laughs> they were, which is, I mean, it doesn't always work out like that. In fact, it very rarely works out like that. So we're very excited about that. Um, but like I said, these are just magnetic anomalies right now. Obviously, they're proximal and underneath the main copper and soil and copper and rocks anomalies, which gives us a lot of confidence that these anomalies are related to the copper at surface. Um, but they're anomalies. And until we actually go and drill those anomalies, we don't know what they are. But obviously, based on all the different data sets kind of put together, uh, obviously, our confidence in what those could be is, is certainly increasing. And we're looking forward to getting kind of the next stage of work un un under um, underway here. And what would that next stage be? I know you said you've requested a 3D model. I guess that's to help you understand a bit more, and I would guess, uh, plan a drill program. Yeah, so what we have right now is a 2D layer. It just shows us if you look down from a bird's eye view, where are these magnetic anomalies? That's obviously really important. But the great thing is about these different, um, about these surveys, is the geophysicist can then take this data and do 3D inversion. So effectively, the math behind it, I don't understand. It's very complex but they can actually make and turn this into a 3D model. So those anomalies that we, those kind of those round anomalies that we see at surface within the high grade zone, we'll then get to see what those potentially could look like at depth. So big, you know, and the important kind of questions are, what is the shape of this at depth? Obviously we know the shape at surface, but it could vary at depth. And also how deep are they? Um, based on the, on the strength of those anomalies, we don't believe that they're going to be too deep. You can kind of already tell that by just various things that you have at surface. Um, but the shape of them and ultimately the depth are the next big important questions here. So the inversions will be done. The great thing is it's very cheap to do the inversions once you've collected the ground magnetic work. So it's another very low cost, but hopefully very high impact result for the company. Uh, and then once we have those inversions, we'll be able to put out those results and show everyone what these anomalies look like at depth. And then at that point, we'll announce what the next steps would be. Okay. And I'm, I'm guessing the next steps will be drilling. Um. That that's probably the the. <laughs> I see you. I'd I like it to laughing. be drilling. <laughs> no, absolutely. I mean, the, si since day one, we've said that we measure twice and we cut once. The reality mm. is, all the data sets continue to point to something very exciting and potentially significant okay. here at Garfield. I need to see the inversion results, right? Okay. Before we before we did the mag, people said, "Are you going to do the mag then drill?" Well, now we have these targets that increases our confidence quite significantly. I need to see the inversions and then we go from there. I, you know, the reality is at the end of the day, if I can go in and drill two holes and go right into a copper porphyry and spend an extra month or two months and spend an extra 10, 15,000 pounds to measure that, I will do that. So I can't guarantee it will be drilling, but obviously the inversions will tell us a lot about what those look like in 3D space, okay. which is a very important part of drill targeting. There's further geophysical surveys you could do to really hone in. So I don't want to promise anything, but obviously the inversions are telling us what or will tell us what's at depth, which is an important step towards planning the drill program. Okay. I'm just keen to see Golden Metal get drilling somewhere. And I think I'm sure investors are as well, but that does bring us on to Pilot Mountain where you have also uh, the commissioned ground magnetics there at Pilot Mountain with results, which you said will lead to a drill program. No, this, this, so this is nothing related to the drilling. Well, I, I shouldn't say that. So to, 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 on your previous point, you want to see gold metal resources drilling. Well, that's what we're doing at Pilot Mountain. We've done a ton of work there, preparatory yeah. work. We're feeling very confident about our targets there. We know what's in the ground right now at Desert Chile, and we believe there's a very good chance we're going to find a material amount, more material outside of Desert Chile, which is obviously really important for that project. So we've signed a drill contract for, for, for Pilot Mountain. The permit we expect to receive imminently, um, so we'll certainly announce that when we when we've done that. So, uh, and we'll also announce um, very soon here further details in the program, including a start date. Uh, but that program is coming very quickly here, and all the kind of different things are in place. So we'll have an announcement very soon okay. here, which will cover a lot of those details. But the reason we actually did the ground magnetics 
was there's a porphyry south target. I encourage listeners to go back to some of our previous RNSs about Pilot Mountain, which talk about that porphyry south target. Now, there was a historic magnetic anomaly which identified and which led us into this porphyry south target. We did some IP over it, which gave us further confidence in that target. But we said, hey, we got this crew 20 miles down the road. Let's get them on the site and do a really high resolution grid over that target because it's going to be one of our drill targets for this program. So for this program, everything is going ahead. But we said, hey, we can just actually just do a quick survey here and really increase our confidence in how we target this during the upcoming program. So we said, why not? Uh, and especially considering how how successful this survey was in helping identify these mm -hmm. what look to be or what we hope will be porphyry centers at Garfield. It's the exact same methodology and, and same deposit type that we're looking for at Pilot Mountain. So as a just quick mm -hmm. reminder, the tungsten, copper, silver, zinc that we have at surface at, at, at uh, Pilot Mountain is related to scarring type systems. Scarns are related to porphyry. So as a geologist, one of the first questions I asked when we took on Pilot Mountain was, is there a porphyry somewhere that's driving all the fluid flow? Once again, with the porphyry potentially representing a very significant prize. So we're, we've identified now two porphyry targets at Pilot Mountain, um, which we will be drilling alongside a lot of a lot of these really important scarring targets. But the magnetics gives us another layer of data for very cheap, which will improve our targeting. So it's 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 all part of the ongoing program that we're working on at Pilot Mountain. Okay, good stuff. Well, thank you very much for your time today. Oliver Friesen, the CEO of Golden Metal Resources. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Let's chat again soon. If you enjoyed this interview, then give us a thumbs up, a like or a retweet. Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Twitter and hit that notification bell to be the first to know when we release new content. There's loads of great content on our website too, across all our programs at stockboxmedia.com. Thank you for watching. Thank you.